I had a really good question in the comments last week um, from one of my viewers. And they were asking if I took the G2 and the Quest 2 and I set the render resolution for both of them in Steam VR to be exactly the same, did they both perform exactly the same? And by performance, we were in, uh, did, the, did, our, did my PC perform exactly the same, actually, is the real way to phrase that. The headsets do what they do, that's irrelevant. But yes, if I match the resolutions in SteamVR, the render resolutions, did my PC perform exactly the same for both headsets? So were they making it in the same games, in the same scenes, on the same settings, was the frame per second and the, and the frame times, you know, exactly the same? Or was there some overhead for the Quest 2 using the link cable? And I thought that's a really good question because obviously with link, there's some additional encoding going on after the game has actually been rendered. And I thought, well, what a, what a great question. Let's test it and find out. So I tried it in Dirt Rally I tried Half-Life Alex and I tried Star Wars Squadrons. So three completely different types of game, both visually and gameplay wise. Um, and I thought that's gonna give a nice sort of even spread and a fair test across everything there. Obviously I, I did it all on the same PC. So same graphics card, same CPU, same RAM, same everything else. Um, and I used exactly, so I just basically, I just started in, in squadrons, I just started from exactly the same, beginning of the same mission each time. In Dirt Rally, I started exactly the same stage, with the same conditions each time. And in Half-Life Alex, I started from exactly the same checkpoint each time. So each test is as, as fair and as accurate as it can be. And I used the performance overlay in Steam VR to monitor the frame times and the frame per second and the overall load on the GPU. Now, you can't quite match the resolutions of these two. Um, not literally one-to-one. -one. The reason for that is the G2 has a square resolution or panel per eye, whereas the Quest 2 doesn't. It's ever so slightly rectangular. So the closest I could get was the following resolutions. I'll put them on the screen now. So the Quest 2 was at 2704 by 2736, and the G2 was at 27.92 by 27.36. So the G2 was technically running, what is that, 88 pixels more on the horizontal resolution. So a, a, a tiny bit more, but that is as close as I could get. Um, but as I say, because they're not exactly the same shape panels, it would be, it's impossible to make it do it any other way. But that's close enough for the test. And I ran it at that resolution because I wanted to run a resolution where the graphics card, the, the whole PC, was being fully utilized. If we had loads of overhead, then it's not gonna be a very fair test. So, you know, running it at a really low res or really low settings would kind of be pointless. You need to max everything out so that the computer's working as hard as it can on both headsets. That way, if you see better performance on one than the other, you know that headset that's sh that shown better performance obviously um, is a little less load on the PC than what the other one is. And the answer is there was absolutely no difference whatsoever. Frame times were within a millisecond of one another. So, you know, things were maxed out. I'm, I'm hovering around 11 milliseconds, say, because I really was you know, pushing things, 11, 12 milliseconds. Um, and it was exactly the same on both the Quest 2 and the G2. Um, and you know, this, this is Half-Life Alex specifically. It wasn't able to hold a steady 90 FPS um, at that either, but this is the whole point. It was to really stress it and make sure everything was being pushed so we could see if there was a difference. But no, as far as I can tell, you know, and the, the same results in Dirt Rally, same results in Star Wars Squadrons, as far as I can tell, running the quest over Link, this is not over Virtual Desktop, this is over Link to be clear, um, draws no additional, there's no additional load versus running the G2 at exactly the same resolution. Now obviously we know both these headsets are very high resolution. They're both quite hard to run, you know, if you want to get that sort of one-to-one -one 
pixel to render ratio in the center of your display, which we, we, we want to do if we can for that sort of maximum sharpness and, and make use of these panels. But yes, there's the answer to that question. If you're considering perhaps which headset to go with based on the load it, it, it puts on your PC for PC VR games, there's absolutely no difference. If you're running them at the same resolution, the load is exactly the same. And this does make sense, to be honest, because even though Link does have to then encode it again, compared to rendering the game in the first place, encoding that video is, you know, it's a tiny amount of load. And, and like I say, it was, it was immeasurable in my testing. You know, the, the, the FPS was within one frame. Obviously things fluctuate a little bit when you move your head and when you're driving and, and flying and whatever else, but it was across the two, you know, they were, they were both exactly the same. So yeah, if you're, if you're making a choice based on load, I wouldn't worry, you can buy whichever one you want because they both pull exactly the same amount of load on your, on your PC. You're still gonna need, you know, an RTX 3080 or better to be able to run these flat out, but um, that is just the way it is with these high-res headsets. Anyway, that's that question answered. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.